I've been dating this girl for some time now, and our time together on weekdays are rather spontaneous and casual. After work, I'd call her to find out where she is and whether she had time for me. Then I'd go to her to spend time fooling around at her rental apartment, go for dinner together, grocery shopping etc. There were never any complaints about this from her, until one day, when we got into an argument about an unrelated matter. She accuses me of having no respect for her and her time, because I always call her at the last minute, and expect her to make time for me. She declares that I'm causing her a lot of inconveniences, because she can never make any plans on weekday evenings, since she doesn't know if I have time for her on any given weekday. Going forward, she's going to reject all plans that weren't made at least 24 hours in advance. She's a busy girl after all. I was shocked. This was never my intention. The nature of my work means that I have to do an unknown amount of overtime every day. What I've been doing is to call her at 6pm when she gets off work to give her an estimate of when I will finish and when I can reach wherever she is. I can only get a reliable estimate at around 5pm when my bosses leave for home. What this means is that if I have to give her a 24 hours heads up, I can never make any weekday commitments. So I appeal to her with the argument that she doesn't have to keep her weekday evenings free for me. She can go ahead and make her own plans and just turn me down if she already has something else scheduled. She rejects that argument because reasons. Now, my girlfriend is a foreigner in my country on a work visa. She has no family and few friends here. As a result, she gets lonely and wants to spend as much time together as possible. Under my previous method of meeting her spontaneously, I can be with her for weekdays every week on average. If I'm required to give her a 24 hours advance notice, I can meet her all weekdays every week. So that's exactly what I did. The day after, I made no plans with her. I let her know when I'm off work, then told her I'm going home. I didn't make plans with her for the next day either. I can tell she's pissed because she's giving very curt replies to my attempts at small talk, but I don't care. I went straight home and gamed for the first time in 6MTHS. It was glorious. I used to be hardcore gamer, gaming at least 2 hours to 18 hours every day, but had to give it up because she required a lot of attention. This went on for a few days until Saturday finally arrives. I paid for my act of defiance dearly that weekend, but she rescinded the stupid rule and we were back to how we were before by the following week. First post here, on mobile, obligatory sorry for formatting issues yada yada. Backstory to this is I was working in a family run restaurant I was 17, and it was my first ever job. In the UK there are strict rules about how long under 18s can work without having a break, and how long they can stay for in the evening for this story we will focus on the break issues. In the UK an under 18 at the time, got a half hour break for every 4 hours, that was being worked. One weekend I was given a shift, that started at 11, and finished at 15.30 so a 4 and a half hour shift. I had mentioned to my supervisor, that I was working a 4, 12 hour shift so, if possible could I have my break earlier, so that it made it easier. His response was you only get your break, once you have worked your 4 hours cue me agreeing. Having my half an hour break at 1500 hours, and then promptly leaving after my break had finished all the while a large group of around 25-30 people had arrived leaving only one person working the floor. I didn't work there for much longer after that as I found a better job, but if I ever worked that shift pattern again I was always given my break a little earlier. Thanks for editing. A good few years back I did some occasional contract work for my country's prison service. I'd work a total of maybe 3 afternoons a month. That could be in any 3 out of 8 or so prisons. I'd submit timesheets at each prison and eventually get around 750 euros, less deductions for tax and insurance, deposited in my bank account. Now, the thing is they were hopeless at paperwork. And, to make it worse, the system was designed to assume that everyone was employed at exactly one prison only, so cross-prison paperwork and budgeting was bizarrely complicated. My timesheets all had to be posted from each prison to my home prison, the one I was nominally employed at. 
the home prison added up the numbers, sent a request to the national pay unit for processing. At best, a timesheet was delayed a month, often longer. Payslips I got gave no clue as to which timesheets they covered. So I had no way to tell which timesheets had been paid and which were in process or had been denied or lost. Typically, as far as I could see, about 1 in 10 timesheets were lost or altered. So I was being underpaid by maybe 10% with no obvious way of correlating pay to timesheets. That was good for a prison who was trying to underspend their budget, but not so good for me. I complained bitterly to the national headquarters. They commiserated, but said there was nothing much anyone could really do until a new national pay system was put in place. I would just have to trust them to get it right in the end. About two months later, I worked a short month. Total timesheets would have totaled around 250 euros. A month or two later, 25,000 euros, less deductions, drops into my bank account. The payslip gave no clue as to which of my timesheets was being paid. And so, dear reader, I trusted them. They never asked for it back. So it must have been right, yes? So, some background. I live in an apartment complex, and each apartment has 5 people in it. Everyone has their own kitchen, but for some reason everyone from 4 different apartments eats, cook, and hangs in my apartment. No one cleans up after themselves, so I have to do dishes, clean, and take out trash for at least 15 people. This is frustrating, but I deal with it. Well until last week. So last week I cooked for everyone, it took me like an hour and a half. I finished and cleaned up all my dishes, except one I had to let soak overnight. The next morning I had to leave early for class, so it stayed dirty until the afternoon. That afternoon someone from a different apartment and their friend cooked, and had to clean that pot before using it. After they finished, ate, and left, I had to clean their dishes. The next day those two guys went into my room, when I was studying, and said they needed to talk. I walked out with them to see all four apartments sitting silently on the couches and chairs looking at me when I walked in. They sat me down like some intervention. Then the guy started talking. I just have to let you know that we talked about this and we find it unfair that you left your dirty pot, forcing me to clean it before I could use it. A couple of nods of agreement. I believe that you should clean up after yourself the night of because it's unfair to the rest of us. Just then my roommate spoke up you guys, do realize that op stays up late at night to clean up every own's mess, right? The guy responds I know you're op's friend, but you don't have to make up lies, if that was true op would not be leaving dishes for us to do before we cook. I responded by saying yo, that was one dish I had to let soak, I always clean up after everyone. Are you guys delusional? You can stop lying now, how about we just all do our own dishes, like we are supposed to. This made me chuckle inside you know what, you're right. We all need to be more responsible, and do our own dishes. I'm sorry for what I did. The guy then says thank you for finally taking responsibility. Oh yes I was very sorry for what I did. I should have never been doing other people dishes. One week of me not doing others dishes, and our apartment has no clean dishes, and the dirty ones can no longer fit in our commercial sized double sink. When I cook, I just grab a dirty dish clean it use it, and clean it again, and put it into the empty cupboard, where all the non-existent clean dishes should go. I'm going out to Walmart today, to buy my own dishes, to keep in my room. The rest of the people can deal with their mess. Colon close bracket. Update extra info. I don't let people in, my roommates just give out a lock combination like it's candy on Halloween. I can't change the lock combination, and even if I did they would still tell people the new one. Also I'm moving out next month. Update 1, my apartment smells horrible, probably going to be roaches soon. Update 2, as recommended I have talked to apartment manager about this. He told me he will reply soon. Update 3, the apartment manager inspected our apartment. It is not up to code. In our rent agreement it says that you have to keep the apartment clean to a certain standard. If you fail to do so professionally cleaners will come to the apartment and will be paid by whoever has not done their share in apartment upkeep. He has given our apartment 48 hours before he comes back to check. I will record proof of what I clean so they can't drop the bull on me again. 
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, a like and a comment would mean a lot in YouTube's world. Share with us if you would have done things differently. And don't forget to support the original authors with an upvote. Links are in the description. Peace out, and catch you tomorrow.